Hello, hope your day is being so great. Well, in this video, we will know what goes into pharmaceutical solutions. What are the exhibients used to make successful pharmaceutical solutions? Here is Dr. Sudika Tube and we will give you a simple dose of knowledge. Earlier, we went some kind deeper to know what solutions are and how they are formed. We have had a go over the various advantages they offer as pharmaceutical dosage forms. And also, we went through some of the disadvantages that would make us think of an alternative. Now it's time to know what goes into pharmaceutical solutions. Pharmaceutical solutions, like any others, are composed of solute and solvent. The main solute is the active pharmaceutical ingredient, and the solvent is chosen based on the solubility of the active pharmaceutical ingredient, yet it has many other characteristics that has to be met, including the following. First, is the compatibility with the components or excipients used in the solution formulation. The solvent or the solvent system should have no interaction with these excipients and should facilitate no reaction between the ingredients, in other words, being chemically inert. It should also be aesthetically pleasing having certain viscosity, acceptable or good odor, color and taste. Another thing to put in consideration when choosing solvents for pharmaceutical solutions is their toxicity. Of course, we don't want to put any component that is toxic and might cause any harm. There are certain solvents that are prohibited for usage in solutions for parenteral administration. There are also others that are allowed in certain amounts only for oral solutions. There is something I have to call out before proceeding. Yes, we have different solution types based on the state of the components of the solution. We have gaseous solutions, we have solid solutions, but what I am referring to here are the liquid ones. And these are the most encountered type of solution in pharmaceutical industry. This was a point I have to say it loud to prevent any misunderstanding that can happen. Now, moving back to the excipients used in pharmaceutical solutions. Well, the solvent that comes closer to meet nearly all the criteria we've just mentioned for pharmaceutical solution solvent system is water. However, other solvents are also used mostly under the category called co-solvents. To put it in simpler words, water is the first choice we think about when forming a pharmaceutical solution. But not everything is freely soluble in water. This simply means water can't dissolve all things fully and that's why some other solvent or solvents termed co-solvents are used with it to enhance the solvent action of water and contribute to the stability of the final product. You can understand more about solubility, its meaning and levels in the solubility video. I will put the link in the description box for you. Now we have our API dissolved in a suitable solvent system. What else should we add to that to make a successful pharmaceutical solution formulation? Well, we might need to add buffers. The reason is to resist any change in the pH of the solution which might affect the solubility of the components and eventually the stability of the whole formulation. And also, if we have some vitamins, essential oils or anything prone to oxidation in the solution, 
it's essential to consider adding antioxidants. For solutions for induction and ophthalmic solutions, we might need to add what is known as isotonicity modifiers to maintain the osmotic pressure and prevent any disturbance in the physiology of the body environment when administering this dosage form. Topical solutions are difficult to remain on the skin or in the eye for a very obvious reason. Therefore, viscosity enhancers are added. These are substances or gelatin agents and as their name implies, they increase the viscosity of the preparation to which they are added. We might also use sweetening agents and yes, obviously they are used to enhance the taste of the solution formulation. Yet the taste is not the whole thing as what the patient perceives first is the flavor or odor of the formulation. Thus flavoring agents might be used to mask unpleasant odors in some solutions, especially those for children usage. Coloring agents are quite common excipients used in pediatric preparations as well. Some materials used as excipients in pharmaceutical solutions represent excellent growth media for bacteria, especially if found in aqueous environments. Sometimes it's not the materials, but the equipment, environment or personnel might contribute to the product contamination in a way or another. And to ensure none of these things result in having contaminated product, we better add preservative. These are the main categories of excipients used in pharmaceutical solutions per operation. There are various examples representing each category. I deliberately didn't mention any to make it simpler for you. For the same reason, I'll cut it here and next time we will talk about the various methods of pharmaceutical solution preparation and the quality requirements needed for pharmaceutical solutions products. Here is a recap of what has been said. You can take a screenshot and look at it later. Don't forget to share your comments down below and as always stay fabulous wherever you are.